Before we jump into the patient care report, let's go over the MediView interface and the several types of data the system was designed to collect. Later, we'll introduce tools that our team built to make filling in a PCR faster and easier. There's room for a lot of detail, and our goal is to make collecting all that information quick, easy, and relatively painless. The better to maximize the value of the data we'll be handing off to the ED, to our QA coordinator, or to our agency administrator. It's worth mentioning why there is so much information in a MetaView report. It's the first ePCR to be designed for the new Nemesis version 3 data system, which includes almost double the level of detail than a version 2 report. But the system is also more flexible when it comes to state and local needs, as well as EMS to hospital communication. Our ePCR looks more extensive than other ePCRs in the market, but they will catch up eventually. By using MetaView, you're ahead of the game. The first thing to know about MetaView is that our interface is pattern-based. So once you know where to find the information you're looking for and how to enter it, navigating should become familiar. The key to understanding how to enter data is knowing what type of data entry field you're looking at. Once you're familiar with them, you can use them again and again. This training video is intended to help you hit the ground running as you navigate MetaView's tab-based interface. Our final user video will take you through the interactive paper document design, which works a bit differently and is meant for use by folks who prefer a paper-like design. Through the PCR, we'll encounter the following types of buttons most frequently. Number 1. Drop-down menus without a write-in option have a shaded gradient. Clicking the menu with either the mouse or your finger will expand it, revealing a menu of choices from which to select. Free text entry is not an option on shaded drop-down menus, but agency administrators can often change the options that are presented on the list. Number 2. Drop-down menus that do have a write-in option and usually predictive text. These buttons are white but have an arrow at the far right edge. Entering data into them by typing, using the on-screen handwriting tool, or using the on-screen keyboard, will filter the list to the keyword that was entered. Number 3. Text fields, which are white but have no arrow. When you click into a text box and it's selected, a light-colored border will appear around the box. This is your sign that the box is selected and can be filled in by typing with the keyboard, by using the handwriting recognition tool, or by using the on-screen keyboard. Number 4. Button lists are white rectangles, usually about an inch or two wide, but sometimes a bit larger or smaller. Anytime you see a button list, you'll know that you can make multiple selections from the available choices. Click any button once for yes, twice for no, and a third time to reset to off. The text within the button itself can often be customized to your agency's needs. Number 5. Binary buttons are either true, false, yes, no, and so on. When selected, the positive choice is shaded green and the negative choice is shaded red. Number 6. Expander boxes are sections bordered by a white outline with a little arrow and a circle alongside the label. These boxes, which contain a set of data, default to either open or closed based on your agency's selection. To keep the interface easy to navigate, they usually default to close for data elements that are only used on specific occasions, such as MCI or trauma details. To open an expander box, simply touch the label when the arrow is pointed down, as in open this way, and it will open. Enter any details you need, then either leave it as is, or touch the label again to close the box. The details that you entered in the box will remain, even when the box is closed. Number 7. On pages where multiple sets of data can be entered at a single instance, say, multiple body parts are being assessed simultaneously, or more than one allergy or medication, click the Add button in the top right corner of the data field. To erase one or more sets of data, click the red X alongside and confirm your choice. On pages where multiple sets of data may be entered over time, say, a second or third set of vitals collected over a long transport, or another procedure done in response to a patient's condition, you'll find a button bar on the right margin of the page. Click Add to add a virtual page of assessments and use the navigation buttons to scroll through multiple sets of data. 
The data set number will be indicated at the top of the tab as well as on the bottom of the button bar, set 2 of 2 for example. When multiple sets of data have been entered, the previous set of information will be copied to the new page for your convenience to help with data collection in contexts where the patient's condition is not changing over time. You'll know the data is copied because it's in italics. Copied data are easily changed by entering new information into the relevant fields. Number 8. PNNV buttons, also known as pertinent negatives, are little gray boxes in the upper right corner of data fields where they apply. The letter in each box is an acronym or abbreviation that can be viewed by holding a mouse over it. PNNV buttons indicate why a data element was not collected, for example, because the patient was unconscious and could not respond, or because he or she refused treatment. PNNVs lock the items they relate to. Deselect them with the second touch or click if there is data to place in the field after all. Number 9. Throughout the PCR, you'll find buttons with labels that describe the role they play in simplifying data collection. For example, a Now button next to a time field that applies a current timestamp. Calculate from DOB, where the DOB can be used to auto-calculate the patient's age. Add Crew Member, where reporting requirements calls for indicating the crew member who did a particular process if he or she is not already listed on the PCR. Or Take Picture to activate the built-in camera function and visually capture a picture of the patient's ID, insurance card, advanced directive, or the incident scene. In each case, pushing the button performs the task indicated. Number 10. Finally, on the far right edge of the screen are two little squares. One looks like an old-school inkwell, the other like a little keyboard. Clicking these buttons activates the handwriting recognition and on-screen keyboard functions respectively when a text field where they can be used is selected. Once activated, each will stay on until deactivated with a second touch or click, but the handwriting field or on-screen keyboard will only appear when a field is selected into which free text can be entered. If on-screen handwriting is activated, then after clicking into the text box, a gray frame will appear on the bottom half of your screen in which a line of text can be entered using your finger or a stylus. Be sure to press down firmly. Keep in mind that each standard text field captures one line per box, so if you plan to enter a long entry, be sure to write small but make the space between each word easy to determine. If the on-screen keyboard button is selected, the full keyboard will appear where it is required for typing alphanumeric data. When a numbers only field is selected, for example when entering phone or social security numbers, only a numerical keypad appears. Click outside the text box to deselect the text field and make these data entry tools disappear. With this overview of the data entry fields within the PCR, we're ready to get started using them.